Hi everyone, this is going to be our um, 6.7 uh, video, uh, which is I can graph a quadratic function and use the graph to solve problems. My goal is under 10 minutes. We'll see how we do. Uh, so let's just review a couple things real quick off, um, off the bat. Uh, that is our standard quadratic equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, so that's what we're going to look at graphing today. All right. Uh, there are some tricks to make our graphs easier. We're going to use Desmos to graph as well, just to check it. And that gives us a nice visual to see if we actually did it right by hand. Um, so a couple other key terminology points here. Um, parabolas. That is what the shape is going to look like. So we call that graph a parabola. We can either have it look like this, or we can have it look like this. All right. So that is nice. We know what it looks like. All right. A um, couple things to note. The vertex is either going to be the highest point or the lowest point on the graph. So I'm just going to put an X right there. Those would be considered vertexes. And to calculate that value, we can actually, to calculate the X value of that vertex, we can say it's, it's negative B over 2A. All right. Um, and that'll help us. We'll have to calculate the Y, but that will help us with, um, with making our graphs. Um, all our axis of symmetry is, is essentially a line that would cut straight down the parabola. Let's do it in red right here straight down the parabola that would cut the parabola um, in half so it's the same on both sides and that's going to help us i think graphing as well but it's good to know uh, what that is um, one other quick thing to note um, the a in this equation right here i'm just going to circle it draw a little arrow over here all right just to maybe help us out if the a is a negative number all right so if it's negative something we know that our graph is going to look like that right there all right, so if A is negative, we are going to have a graph that will open down. If A is equal to a positive number, all right, we're going to have a graph that looks like this. It will open up, all right? So that is an important skill um, thing to know as well as you're making your graphs today. You'll, you'll know right away if it opens up or not. And I, and I like to, I really like to look at that. I like to know that before I really um, jump into that too much. All right, so let's go ahead and, and, and look at our first problem here. I'll try to do two with you here. So our first equation is this. Notice that it kind of looks like that standard form. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. We know our A would be one in this case. Maybe we'll put a little one in front of that. Uh, we know our B would be three. We know our C is obviously negative four. That will help us, okay? Uh, because A is positive, we know the graph's gonna open up. So right now, all the uh, you know, right off the bat, we're thinking, all right, that's what our graph has to look like. That'll be a good visual for us as we think about it. Okay, first step, we need to calculate the vertex. All right, so we know the vertex. We know the A value. To find the A value of the vertex, we're gonna do negative B over 2A. Important step here. So let's go ahead and do that. So our B is negative three, or three, so we'll say it's negative three all over two times our A of just one. And we end up with a value of negative three halves. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and scroll out a little bit here. I gotta. That's weird. Um, I have a table prepared for us and a graph right here. So I'm just going to zoom out quite a bit here. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and write down um, negative 1.5 right there for our x value. All right. Now, here's how you calculate the y value. What you do is you take this x and you need to substitute it in to the equation where both of our x are. So we'd have to do negative 1.5 squared. Um, and then we'd multiply it by one. We'd have to do three times negative 1.5, and then we would add those three numbers, three things together, all right? Um, for purposes of time, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to calculate that. Um, I've already taken the liberty of doing that to save time, so it's negative 6.25, all right? So we got our value right there. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and graph that and, and put that as close as I can on my graph here, um, and I'd like you, as you're doing this, you should be doing this with me. So negative 1.5, and then negative 6.25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.25. It's going to be about right there. I know it's kind of hard to see, um, but that's where it should go, about right there. All right. Now, our axis of symmetry, if I wanted to, I could draw a dotted line right down and hit that point right there. We know that that is going to be, because it opens up, that's our lowest point in the graph. We know the graph is going to open up. All right. So... The reason why the axis is symmetry and knowing that is so nice because we can pick a value on the same the same distance away from our axis of symmetry or the same distance away from x and it'll be the same y value let me explain um, so i'm going to choose a negative one and a negative two 
as my two values. Those two values are the same distance away from the x that's above it right there. They're both half away, all right? So the cool thing is, because the parabola looks the exact same on either side of the axis of symmetry, if you calculate one of them, you actually have calculated both of them, all right? Um, so I always like to do it this way because then I pick the easier number to calculate. I plug that in for x, and I know I've done it for both of them. All right. Again, I've already taken the liberty to do this, but what I want you guys to do is plug a negative one in for X into both of these, see what you get and, um, and go ahead and, and maybe try it with both of them just to prove that it works, but it will. And we're going to get a negative six for both of them. Now I write it nice and big. I guess I could write it twice there, um, but let's go ahead and graph that. So negative one, negative six, do my best to graph it is right there in there. So the parabola is starting to go like that right there. All right. So it's the same distance away. Let's go ahead and do that again now. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna try to go equal distance away. So I'm gonna choose a zero and a negative three. So I am currently, if you think about it, zero and negative three are both 1.5 units away from negative 1.5. It's kind of like that negative 1.5 is right in the middle. Again, I love that because I could go ahead and just calculate when X is zero, what is Y? because negative three will give me the same answer. So in this case, I've already done it, but the zero is really easy because it's just whatever your C is. So that will equal negative four. Let's go ahead and graph that one real quick. So zero, negative four would be right there. And uh, negative three, negative four would be right there. So you can kind of see now here's our shape of our parabola. It's taking form. All right, all right. Let's go ahead and do one more. And we're gonna actually figure out where these lines cross as well across the x-axis, which is an important number eventually. Call those the roots, actually. Uh, but let's go ahead and do one more. So let's go 1 and negative 4. So 1 and negative 4. All right. And the 1 and the negative 4, um, again, you could plug in either number. Okay. I would put the 1 in because it's going to be easier, but it would give you the same value. So when we plug a 1 in, um, we actually end up with 0 right here. So maybe I write it twice. Maybe I write it once big. I don't really care. Uh, so let's graph that 1 zero, negative four, zero. So what we have here is we have a nice parabola taking shape. All right. And that's how we do that. All right. Uh, kind of nice. Um, that is our steps right there. Okay. So again, step one, find the X value of the vertex. Okay. Which we did. I'm going to circle it right there. That was our first step. Of course it deleted that three. All right. But we found the X value of the vertex. Then we found the Y value of the vertex. We graph that first point. Then we can go ahead and we can find you know, pick our other points that are equal distance away from that axis of symmetry, and we can make a nice flowing graph like that. Okay. Now I want to prove to you that this um, actually looks the way it does. We're going to plug it into Dem Desmos, and I'm going to show you what that looks like now. So let me just open up Desmos here. And um, our equation is y is equal to, oops, y is equal to uh, x squared. Here's how you do x squared. You do a little caret, and it will actually give it to you like that. Uh, and then we're going to go plus 3x. And then we're going to say minus four. And you can see now, here's our equation. We typed it in. Notice the shape. Notice the vertex way down here, negative 1.5 and negative 6.25. That's what we calculated. Uh, notice these x values. When x was one, uh, y was zero. And when x was negative four, y was zero. And here's all the other points on the graph. Now we did calculate this. Like if I go and I hover this little mouse right over here, you can see, you know, it is really negative two, negative six. It does show up. Um, and that's what we did calculate as our value. This one here would be, you know, negative one, negative six. If I could get it in the right spot, there it is. Okay. So that's our parabola right there. So use Desmos to check your, check your answers out. I think it's a really valuable tool right there. All right. Um, because of purposes of time, here's what I'm gonna have you guys do. I'm gonna have you guys try this one. All right. So this is your practice. Now you're going to try this one first. All right. So it's just a couple quick heads up. You have your a value is negative one half, your B is gonna be negative one, your C will be one, all right? Go ahead and do exactly what I just did right there. Find the X value of the vertex, graph that point, then find points on either side, equal distance away. I want you to go ahead and graph it, all right? Um, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into Desmos as well so you can see if you did it right or not. So why don't you pause the video here, go ahead, try this, all right? I'll just let you pause that. And after you unpause it, then you can um, check the rest of my video here with Desmos. So um, you're paused right now. Let's see here, go back in here. So if you're unpaused now, 
Um, hopefully you're following my instructions there. I'm just going to put the equation in. So it's negative uh, 1 over 2 uh, x. And we're going to square that. And we're going to subtract x from it. And then we're going to add 1 to it. Just type it in right there, and this is what your graph should look like. All right, just scroll it over here. Um, hopefully you discovered that your vertex was negative 1 and negative 1.5. All right, that's what the vertex should have been. All right, hopefully you realize that it opened down as well because A was negative. So we hopefully re remember that. Uh, here is something we call the roots. Um, they're kind of hard to see, um, but uh, you can see that that's of where they are. Looks like negative 2.732, uh, but you can see here, this is what the graph should look like. So hopefully you did okay with this. Um, thanks for watching and that's it.